I'm going to give you 10 Christmas gift ideas that every banjo player needs. And please hang around to the end of the video because you do not want to miss number 10. Number one is strings. Every banjo player needs new strings all the time because you're constantly changing strings. Now, me, myself, I use the D'Addario. I like the medium strings. Those have been the best for me, and I suggest using those. But there's also GHS strings, which are great. If you like GHS strings, there's nothing wrong with them. And I'm sure there's other great brands out there. That's just the two that I've used the most. Number two, if you're going to get somebody some strings, you've got to get them a string winder. What it does is slide over on your tuning pegs and you twist it and it makes it a lot easier to change strings. I didn't use one of these for many years. And when I finally got one, I could have smacked myself in the face for not having one sooner. Number three is a tuner. Once you put your strings on and once you get them wound tight, you got to tune them up. So you got to have a tuner. Now I use the Snark tuners and I can't remember the exact name of it. I'm sure I'll put a, put a picture of it here on the screen, but I use a Snark tuner. That is not the only tuner out there that you can use. There's a lot of great tuners, but there's a lot of great tuners also on your phone that you can use. I like having a physical tuner that I can have on my peg head. Like if I'm at a jam or something and I just want to really quickly check without having to pull my phone out and reach for my phone in my pocket or figure out, I can just reach for and tap it and then just check a string real quick. It's almost criminal not to have it on your banjo. Number four on this list, guys, is a string and fretboard cleaner. Now, every time I practice my banjo, once I get through the practice session, I take this cleaner and rub it up and down my fretboard on my strings and my fretboard and I wipe it off. It cleans all the oils from your fingers off the strings. It makes your strings last longer, it cleans all your frets off so you don't got your finger grease all over the brick fret sitting there, but it's a GHS cleaner is what I use. Number five on the list is subscribe to this channel. If you are into banjo and you enjoy banjo content, that's all I post on this channel. So please hit that subscribe button. That's the greatest gift you can give anybody for Christmas. Number six is picks. You gotta have picks to play the banjo most of the time. If you're gonna get somebody picks, there's a lot of great ones out there. The finger picks or the uh, the Nationals or the Dunlops. I use uh, Ernie Ball's picky picks. Those are great finger picks to use on the banjo. Just try, I mean, some people may like them. I stay away from the plastic finger picks. Plastic thumb picks are all right, but the plastic finger picks, I have found you just can't get them right on your fingers to do what you need to do. So I'll try to stick with the metal finger picks. And then on the thumb pick, I use the blue chip thumb picks myself, which is a metal ring. And then it has the piece of plastic on the end that hits the strings with. I love them picks. I've used them for a while now. Them are great picks, but you really can't go wrong with uh, a Dunlop or a National, the plastic picks for your thumb. Number seven on this list is a banjo mute. Now you spend all this time getting strings, putting them on your banjo, tightening them up, making them sound as great as you can sound. And then you want to quiet them down because your family hates the banjo. <laughs> I personally recommend Mike's Banjo Mute. I've got a video that reviews that Banjo Mute, and I'll put it up top up here. If you want to click that link, it'll take you to that review video of Mike's Banjo Mute. But a Banjo Mute is almost a must, especially if you have a family and you're trying to practice. I mean, you just can't go without a Banjo Mute. Number eight on my list is a Banjo Capo. You've got to have a Banjo Capo if you're going to play in different keys on the banjo. And the one I use is the Shub. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, Shub. Banjo Capo. And all it does is go around the neck and then you push this little handle up and it tightens down against the bottom of the neck. It goes against the uh, strings on the frets right here and it does a great job of capoing. This one does not sit on the banjo neck. It has to sit off the banjo neck and then you put it on. There's some people that like them that they're already around the banjo neck and they can just pull it off and go down to the fret. They won't tighten it up. I've never personally liked them sitting up top like that because I've had some problems with that sitting up there. So I've always used this type of banjo capo right here. That is a must for any banjo player is a banjo capo. Number nine on my list is a banjo stand. You gotta have a place where you can store your banjo when you're not playing it and you want it to be easily accessible. That way it's sitting there and you can pick it up and play it or set it back down. Now, as you can see in all my videos, I have my banjos hung up back here on wall mounts and I'm gonna tell you that I don't like them. I think it puts a lot of pressure on the peg head holding that weight, especially if you get a heavier banjo, like this Sierra right here is a pretty heavy banjo. Uh, a lot of these other ones, the, the in it more expensive banjos aren't as heavy, so it don't put as much weight on the peg head, but this one right here does, and it actually has bent down the arms that coming out that hold the banjo up. It's bent the arms down on the wall, and so I haven't really liked that. Now, I'm gonna replace these next year with, with floor 
stands that I can set it on the floor and it sets on the resonator instead of hanging on the peg head. I recommend getting the floor mounted banjo stand if you're going to get one. That way it can sit in the floor and it's all the weight is on the resonator or on the body of the banjo and it's not on the peg head. All right, guys, on to number 10 on my list. It's Jack Hatfield's Banjo Board. Now, if you've never heard of this product, it's a board that sits in your lap and it has, doesn't have anything except for the five strings right around where your right hand goes at. It sits in your lap and you can take your right hand and you can sit and practice rolls. You can sit and practice uh, different variants of the rolls with your right hand. It isn't loud at all. You can sit on your couch and do it. You can actually put it in your car in your lap as you're driving down the road and sit there and practice rolls with your right hand. Uh, it's a very, very handy tool, especially for a beginner on the banjo, for you to sit and practice them rolls, and it ain't loud, so you can get the feeling of the strings under your fingers doing the rolls, but without the sound and all the stuff aggravating everybody, so you can get the rolls down. Now, you can't do any left-hand stuff with it. You can get a lot of right-hand work in there, and especially in times that you're sitting there, you ain't doing nothing else. You can just subconsciously be taking your right hand and just playing around on this thing while you're watching TV, while you're driving in a car, while you're, hell, while you're using the bathroom, if you just wash it when you're done. <laughs> uh, but anyways, guys, if you have not heard of this banjo board from Jack Hatfield, I will do a review about it. It is a phenomenal product.